Hello everyone, I'm International Master Min from Hungary. I'm going to be your commentator and we're going to watch a game between Sök and Nora and Borga Peter, International Master. Um, we have a Slav Defense. Now free, D takes E4, E4. White has a 1400 level and Borga Peter is around 2300. Bishop F5. This is a solid opening. We have Bishop F4. It's not the main move. The main moves are knight e5, knight h4 or e3. Now Peter is uh, thinking because uh, he never saw this move and he's thinking how to punish this. As far as I know, he's the number one in the tournament and this is the first round. The time control is 10 plus 5, so we have a rapid time control. So, okay, Black is thinking, okay, he plays 95. Maybe he was thinking whether to play e6 or 95. Now, okay, the bishop is hanging on a 4. Mm. Maybe why should go back to g3 and she goes back to g3. The other option was maybe to take on d5. Okay, now uh, white wants to play e3 and uh, win back the pawn. So maybe back can try to hold on to this c4 pawn by playing uh, b5. The idea is uh, if y takes on b5 then we can take on c3 first, b takes c3 and only then take on b5. Uh, at the moment e4 is not a fork. In interest we call this a fork when a pawn attacks two pieces at the same time. And it looks like white is winning a piece, but black can play nice c3 first, b c3, and only then take on e4. Okay, we have e6. So black is not afraid of e4 because of this intermediate move, knight takes c3, b takes c3, and then bishop e4. And white plays e3 correctly. She didn't blunder e4 and now Peter is playing uh, bishop b4. This is called the pin. More specifically, it's called the absolute pin because the knight cannot move because of uh, legal reason. It, moving the knight would be illegal. Peter is uh, increasing the pressure on c3. And now the c3 net is hanging. There are only two defenders and there are three attackers. So the only way to defend c3 is to protect it with queen d2, which happened in the game. Right now c4 is hanging. c4 has no protection and uh, it's attacked by the bishop. So a good idea could be to protect it with b5. And we have b5 on the board. Um, black has the same, about the same level as me, so we both uh, 
international masters with uh, three, around with with around 350 ratings and uh, I played a few games with Peter I kind of know his style he likes to play solid chess he doesn't like to risk he's a very positional player but that doesn't mean that he would he would uh, shy away from tactics Okay, so if for e4 is still not possible because black can just simply take it, and now we have now h4 on the board. So white wants to grab the bishop pair, and after an f5, he takes f5. White would have the bishop pair advantage. The reason having a bishop pair is an advantage because they can control both sides of the board so if we imagine the bishop on e4 it would control the queen side and the king side whereas the knight it can only influence the board on only one side of the board so a good idea could be trying to save this bishop with uh, bishop g4 maybe that's the only way I see to save the bishop and he's thinking like me he's playing bishop g4 and now there is no way for white to win the bishop pair so if white plays h3 black can just play bishop h5 keeping the bishop pair Or f3, h3, it's the same idea. She plays e4. She wants to get rid of this uh, very strong knight in the center. The knight in the center controls 8 squares. So it's a good idea to chase it away. So if, if it moves to, let's say, b6, from b6, it will be more passive because it controls only six squares and okay he was about to move the knight but suddenly he changed his mind probably he saw other options than knight b6 maybe he's thinking about playing knight f6 because if black plays knight b6 that would block the queen from retreating so he might Think he might uh, consider playing knight f6 uh, not only to keep this uh, queen open but also create a threat of knight takes c4 attacking the pawn and he's about to move the knight and he plays uh, knight f6 okay so e4 is hanging so although there is one attacker and one defender the reason e4 is hanging because the c3 knight is pinned and if the knight on c3 moves then white would lose the queen so therefore why should probably protect this e4 pawn maybe with f3 which gains a tempo but she decides to defend e4 with queen f4 this is also a good way to protect e4 and here white has a very sneaky idea what is white what is uh, white's threat? What do you think? Well, white is uh, threatening with e5. And if the knight moves, then white can capture the bishop. And that's why black uh, moves the bishop out of the queen. So now after e5, the, knight, uh, the bishop 
we don't hang anymore. All right, so. Okay, in the, in the opening, we know that we should uh, develop our pieces. So at the moment, the only piece not developed is the rook on h1. So, but if white plays bishop e2, then black can just capture and we cannot take back with the knight. And if we take with the king, then the king wouldn't feel safe in the center. So bishop e2 is out of the question. So, but then how should we develop our pieces? How to finish the development? This is what uh, Nora is thinking about. How to develop the pieces. Uh, she played knight f3. So she wants to play bishop e2 without uh, allowing bishop e2, king takes e2. And okay, now e4 is hanging, hanging again. Black is not giving the time for white to finish the development. And we have knight d2. It seems like a good move, but the bar doesn't like it. But personally, this is the move I would have considered. So I'm not sure what's wrong with knight uh, 92. Maybe it leaves the d4 pawn uh, unprotected. So maybe black can deal with the tempo with knight c6. This is the move I would thinking about playing. Black could also uh, get the king safe with short castle. Let's see. Yeah, there are two moves for black that are reasonable. Oh, maybe there's a third option. So, as I mentioned earlier, having the bishop pair is an advantage and uh, black can get the bishop pair with knight h5 maybe. Pertaining to take on g3. And knight h5 comes with the tempo. This is called a double attack because it attacks uh, two pieces at the same time. If not h5, maybe I can play queen e3. And taking on g3 would open the rook on h1. So maybe not h5 is not, not so tempting and he decides to play knight bd7, which is a very normal the open move. Black just wants to activate this 8 rook. Maybe Black wants to play rook c8 next. There's an idea of knight b6, knight a4 maybe. And we have bishop e2, short castle and short castle. Okay, now both sides finish uh, its development. Now we reach the middle game. So when when both sides finish the development, that's when the middle game starts. And we have queen b6 on the board, attacking d4. d4 is hanging. How should we protect it? That's what a beginner would think, right? but a, an advanced player would uh, try to counterattack. So one way to counterattack is to play e5. Okay, she plays queen e3, protecting d4. It's a little bit passive move. I would have considered e5. I think I think she played a little bit too fast. She would probably slow down a little bit because uh, she still have five minutes if I see it correctly. And black has only two minutes. <coughs> yeah, 
we have e5 on the board wow very interesting so black is sacrificing a pawn why is he doing that e5 is only protected once and it's attacked twice so in theory white can win a pawn but uh, he saw further because let's say if white wins a pawn with d takes e5 black can capture on e3 and after f takes e3 white would have cheaper pawns and cheaper pawns are considered to be very bad even double pawns are bad but cheaper pawns are uh, even worse the reason they are bad because double pawns or cheaper pawns uh, cannot protect each other therefore they are considered to be weaknesses so let's see how how Nora is going to solve this problem and she takes on e5 allowing the triple pawns and Peter is taking on c3 so this is called the intermediate move white was expecting so uh, the f6 knight was hanging right and white was expecting the knight to move okay we have knight xc4 mm. so we have one two three four five pawns so and black has six pawns black still have the material advantage but at least white has the bishop pair in exchange and okay black has a pass pawn on the a7 if you have a pass pawn you should try to push it and try to create a queen that way you can gain meta advantage and we have rook fd1 on the board attacking the d7 knight knight c5 black is trying to occupy the outpost so we, we call this squares outpost the definition of outpost is it's a it's a square that is not defended by the enemy pawn and it's defended by our own pawn and putting a piece on the outpost is a usually a good idea and she plays bishop h4 she wants to play bishop e7 because he's she sees that uh, so she wants to trade this c5 knight because knight on the outpost is going to be a monster but unfortunately for her she doesn't have time to trade the bishop for the knight because uh, black played knight b3 and this wins an exchange and we have a handshake wow she missed a tactic the rook was trapped there, there was no way to save the rook wow bishop h4 was a final mistake okay we, we have the expected result thank you everyone